All right, guys, so in this video, we're checking out the Hobby Porter Turbo Racing 176 scale RC car, and this uh, might be the world's smallest uh, production ready to run RC car on the market. It's, uh, I mean, 176 scale is hard to describe in terms of how small it is, so here's a quarter just for scale, just to see, just to show you how small this thing really is. It's amazing um, what the technology has brought us uh, in, with this miniaturization. I don't think I've ever had anything this small before. Uh, maybe like 126 scale is probably the smallest I've ever had. And most of the RC cars I have are like 110 scale or 116 scale, so they're much bigger. However, this actually operates exactly like the big ones. It has proportional steering and proportional throttle, so you can control it just like you would a regular RC car. Uh, really doesn't behave any differently. And here's the remote. You have your steering wheel here, you got your trigger throttle, so forward and reverse, just like before. And the uh, remote has your typical throttle and steering trims, as well as your steering and throttle dual rates. So really no different than any, any other um, remote control out there. Obviously this one's in black. I think they now come in different colors as well, and obviously the car comes in different colors. I think four uh, different colors out of um, the factory, but you do get two extra bodies here, as you can see. So these are the same as that's on there, but you can just, you know, they're not painted, they're just gray. So there's a lot of people that are modding these and customizing and creating their own custom paint jobs. So you get two of those, so, you know, it doesn't really matter if like, the, the color you like is not in stock, you can always take the body off and, you know, paint two more, whatever way you like. All you also get a uh, micro, or sorry, a USB-C cable and this little bind pin here. That's um, if you need to bind it to your transmitter, but um, you can see it charges via USB-C and it comes with a 75 milliamp hour uh, 1S LiPo inside. I'll show you that a little bit later. And it runs forever. I think it's like advertising 40 minutes of runtime. Uh, I get uh, I can uh, play around with this for maybe 10, 15 minutes at a time and uh, don't have to charge for a couple days. So it's, uh, yeah, the battery lasts a long, long time, uh, plenty of time in terms of the runtime and it charges very quickly as well. Now, if you do happen to lose the bind, there's a little bind, like a little port here where there's two pins and then you have to short that with the little uh, pin here that's included. And there's a binding procedure that's in described in the manual, the manual is very good, so I'm not going to go over any detail in the manual, but it's, uh, if you need to do that, uh, the by rebinding procedure is in the manual, but it comes bound already with this transmitter. Now, there is a version of this where you can get just the car itself if you say, for example, you already have the transmitter and then maybe the you need an extra car, or maybe the motor's burned or something like that, or the electronics died, and you can just buy the car itself since you have the transmitter, and the car by itself is only like $45 or something, that's pretty reasonable. Now, the remote, it does come in two pieces, so you have to, it comes separate, so it comes in the box like two pieces like this. And then the batteries just go inside here. It's just uh, four AAA batteries, and I'm just using some Duracell, uh, like alkaline batteries, and um, you could probably use, uh, I think, um, rechargeable batteries will work as well. But yeah, just uh, for, you know, storing it in the box, or if you're just, you know, traveling with it, you can break it down. And then when you're ready to start using it, you just uh, slide it in and I'll go ahead and turn it on here. Get the lights. And then when you turn on the car, there's a little switch right here. It'll flash while it's trying to bind or connect. There you go. And now we're connected. And I'll see if I can do this with the uh, two hands here like this. So you can see the steering is totally proportional. I think it's on camera here, so it's a really amazing how much precision you actually have with something this small. And of course you have your throttle, you have sl slower speed, faster speed, and of course reverse. So you have really good precision and control with this. It obviously takes a little bit of practice because it is very tiny, so um, what I would recommend is if you're just starting out and don't know a lot about RC cars, turn your throttle dual rate down. So like 10 is the max. So if you want to go slower, just 
dial this all the way down to like nothing, or maybe like halfway. That basically controls your speed, so if it's going too fast for you, uh, just reduce that. Um, if the steering is too sensitive, then you want to also reduce that. So I have mine about, I don't know, about seven, I think. If we go to 10, you can get, it gets very kind of um, squirrely because it's, when you go really fast, it, it'll, it doesn't take much of a turn of the wheel for it to suddenly just go off in one direction. But let's say, let's say, let's go ahead and turn this all the way up. And I'll just show you what the max is like. This is the maximum steering. It's about that much angle. And then uh, if we, let's say we drop this down to half. So now we're about half of the steering trim. And now at the max, you can see it only goes about that much. So if you want it to not turn so quickly, uh, you can just reduce your steering trim and then it'll, it'll be a little bit more under control, but then again, your turning radius will be um, a lot less as well. So something to keep in mind in terms of um, you know how you want to control the car. It's very controllable, very customizable. So even here on my, my tiny little desk here, I can have a nice, nice wide or you know, tight turning radius. This is the maximum turning radius. And I'm going quite slow and go faster as well. You can see how much of a turning radius you can have, but if you don't want this much turning radius, you can uh, just reduce the um, steering trim here. So I say turn it all the way up, so that's your maximum turning radius. So I'm gonna go back down to what I normally like to drive because when I'm racing on the racing track, uh, that turning radius is a little bit too sensitive for me. So there is a, um, I guess a racing track that you can buy that's uh, sold by Hobby Porter. It's pretty small. So I found that if you go very slow, it's okay. If you're just kind of starting out as a beginner, but um, when you start uh, building up your skill and want to go faster, that track is a bit too small. It's only like $20 anyway. I would say probably not really worth getting unless you're you know, getting it for your kids and you're gonna, you know, gonna be uh, you know, setting it to the slowest setting then yeah, they could learn on it, but it doesn't have any like um, barriers. So basically just the track is just a printed, uh, you know, painting on the mat and you can kind of go wherever you want. So what I, I kind of, I kind of got, I kind of outgrew that really quickly. I think after about 10 minutes. So um, I ended up uh, getting the, this thing called the um, 1080 beast track. Uh, you can pick those up on Amazon, eBay, various places, a little, a little overpricey on Amazon, but they don't um, stock them as much. And then um, if you want to get four of those, they, some guy on eBay sells, I think four of these uh, beast 1080 tracks for like $120 or something like that, which is, I think, uh, unless you have a very large space, um, you can make a really long, huge track with four of these. But for one, I'm not, I mean, the track that I made on, on uh, basically I put it on my coffee table in my living room, uh, I didn't even use all the parts in just one of the sets. So I think I had like about uh, eight pieces left over. Uh, I could make a bigger track, of course, but um, you know, it's bigger than my coffee table. So if you want to just use like simple, you know, you know, indoor racing, you could do that. And by the way, um, I have seen uh, people race these, like I think up to four or five, maybe six cars at a time. I'm not exactly sure what the limit is, but yeah, I've seen, uh, there's a um, pretty good Facebook group. Uh, it's called uh, Turbo Racing 176. I'll link that down in the description. Uh, you guys can check it out. But basically, they, you can see guys um, making their own like tracks as well, just custom tracks, and they're racing each other. It looks like a blast. Um, yes, right. unfortunately right now because of the virus, I'm not gonna be inviting anyone over to, to race with me, but maybe later in the future, <laughs> when the uh, pandemic's over um might be doing some indoor racing but yeah it sounds like a i mean it looks like a, a ton of fun and you can definitely you know go crazy and make all kinds of custom tracks and and obviously you want to get you know, you know bigger tracks for this with um basically wider uh spaces so that you can go faster now, obviously the biggest complaint i think for people that are very skilled at racing these they're they're saying that the speed isn't enough and uh, could be more but you know they're limited by the size of this and the motor that's in here so uh, you know let me just go show you what's inside real quick it's pretty easy to take this um, cover off you just stick a little like screwdriver or flathead inside here and pry off the top like so and then you get this little space and then just pull it off like so and then it pivots in the front 
I think the front holds it in. So if you want to stick on a different body, once you've painted it, you are uh, basically do the same procedure and you can get this in here. You gotta get the headlights lined up on here. And then I'll just go on like that. But you know, I think this is the, it's the exact same body. So this one's painted orange, this one has no paint on it at all. But here it is, what it looks like inside. Tiny little battery, little circuit board for all the controls, and then uh, this little white wire is the antenna for the uh, receiver. A um, couple gears in here. I, uh, I think I've seen some pictures of someone taking this apart. There's two motors inside, two brushed motors. I think they're like six millimeters. Get your USB port there, on off button there. And um, I have seen uh, some guys do like FPV with this, or I think there's an FPV kit that you can get from um, T uh, TBS. Uh, I think the VTX goes back here somehow. I, obviously you're gonna have to get rid of this glue and this like sticky pad, because there's not a lot of space here for the uh, video transmitter. But I may try and uh, use something like this, which might work. So this is a 25 milliwatt video transmitter and FPV camera. Um, I don't know if this is going to fit in here or not with the body on top, because you can see here it's going to be really tight. I mean, I'm going to probably have to get rid of this little sticky pad as well. And then you do have to take the car apart to get to the um, uh, solder points for the power. Uh, I think that's somewhere inside here. So you have, uh, do have to take it apart. I'm probably going to make a separate video on that later because it looks like it's going to be a bit more complicated and beyond the scope of this video. But yeah, if you're interested in that, that's probably going to happen at some point. And then i got to figure out where this camera is going to go. I mean, it would be kind of cool if you could have the camera sort of you know, behind the car like this and then you have like a third person view. So it would look like kind of like this. Well, something like that, maybe put the camera on some sort of a 3D printer part back here. I think that would look cooler than, you know, putting the camera, maybe, I don't know, you could also put a cutout here as well. Then you have the, you could have like the hood view of the, of the car. That could be kind of cool too. What do you guys suggest? Let me know in the comments below. Anyway, so yeah, this thing's super fun. Uh, you know, you can get the tracks if you want uh, to do a little bit more like um, competitions and stuff like that, racing with other people. Uh, but you know, another thing is like, if you want to just kind of, if you're just kind of racing yourself or just racing by yourself, you can build a track and then you can get like this lap chimer or it's called lap tracks from uh, the Android store. I don't know if there's anything similar on um, the iPhone, but there probably is. And that, app basically uses the camera of your phone to um, detect the color of the car and you can actually have up to I think four racers and it'll detect the colors of each of the racers and as you're passing like a starting gate then it can do your lap timing for you so actually I was you know uh, I built a track and then I was just kind of wanting to see how fast I could go and it keeps track of your lap times uh, on the app which is kind of fun if you're just uh, racing by yourself um, of course, you know, you don't have to have a track or any of that stuff at all. You can just put this on the ground and just like put like random objects on the, on, on the ground, some sort of flat surface, of course, because this doesn't work well on carpet, of course, because it's, it's so, there's no clearance, you know, for carpet. So you got to be on like a hardwood floor or something flat and nice and hard. But yeah, you can put like random objects on the floor, just kind of go around and, you know, use those as obstacles and create your own little track on the floor. And that'll be just fine as well. You don't have, you don't have to buy a track or any of that stuff if you don't want to. So... Totally fun, uh, definitely recommend it, and yes, yeah, this is a total blast. So uh, if you uh, want to check this out, there'll be links down in the description. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.